So let's talk about meat. You might think you've got a pretty good handle on what meat means, right? It's the fleshy bits, the animals that you eat. Good old reliable meat, except maybe not so reliable because it hasn't always meant that. There used to be a time where meat simply was our word for food. And that's just one of the many words existing today that's shifted around in meaning through history. I'm O.T. Lieberman and this is The Link Space. Welcome to The Ling Space. Language is a thing that's just changing all the time. Like we saw in our video on the history of English, change can affect any part of language. We can change the sounds we have, like pronouncing the word night the way that we do now instead of the way we did 500 years ago, like knecht. We can change the way that our sentences get put together, like how many dialects of English have lost the double negation that Old English had. Back a thousand years in English, something like Shelley didn't never back down from a challenge was okay everywhere. Now that construction only exists in a limited number of dialects. But one of the most noticeable ways that change can hit a language is right in the vocabulary. New words are invented or borrowed from other languages, and old words fall out of use. Languages can do more than that, though. Even when you have a word already, it's not a static object. A lot of the time, words get shifted around to mean new things. You only need to look around you to come up with a lot of examples. Your mouse isn't a rodent, your shirt is probably not a tunic, and your chair is not a throne. Unless it is, not judging. This is all neat, but it seems kind of random, right? As it happens, there are actually some big trends in how meanings can change over time. You do get a bit of random wiggle in the meaning, but a lot of the kinds of changes that we see are systematic. As a category, we call these different processes semantic shift. For example, one really common kind of change is narrowing. That's when a word's meaning goes from something general to something more specific. Like meat. Meat's a lot more specific now than it used to be. Some other really neat examples exist in this category, too. Like, girl used to refer to any young child regardless of their gender. It was only in the 1500s that it became specifically used just for, well, girls. Or deer was just a general term for animals, up until Shakespeare's time. Of course, semantic shift happens in all languages, not just in English. For example, if we look at Spanish, we can find the word for prey, rezar. That used to just mean to say something aloud, like the English recite. This got narrowed in meaning to just apply to prey. The opposite of narrowing is broadening, which also happens a lot. This is when a word's meaning becomes more general. So like, a holiday used to literally mean a holy day, like a religious event of some sort. Now it's used for any kind of day off, or even a trip or vacation. If you say that you're going on holiday to Wales to visit your friend Tim, no one's going to think that you're going on a religious pilgrimage. Or if you've studied Japanese, you might know that the word sake is used both for the rice wine that we call sake in English and also for alcohol in general. This is because a really long time ago, Japan had only one kind of alcoholic drink, which they fermented from rice and called sake. But later, when beer and wine and whiskey and all the rest made their way to Japan, they needed a label for all of that, and so they used sake as an extension. So that's another example of broadening. Additionally, a word can pick up more meanings by being used as a metaphor. That's where you get something like grasp, a verb that originally just meant to physically hold on to something. But look at something like Desmond finally grasped the essentials of reading and writing. No one is going to think that sentence means that he picked up a book and a pen. Through metaphorical usage, grasp has come to also mean understand. Another type of semantic change is when a word gets a meaning that's more positive than it was originally. Nice is a good example. If you tell me that Eustace is nice, you probably mean that the boy is agreeable and pleasant. But dial it back a few centuries and you'd be telling me that he's foolish. Which might not actually be wrong, but it's probably not what you meant. Nice passed through all kinds of meanings to get to the one we have today, but overall the direction was from negative to positive. This linguistic process is called amelioration, and as you can imagine, it also happens in other languages too. In German today, pumpernickel is a kind of coarse whole grain brown bread. It's sold all over the world, so you might have heard of it. But before it was a sandwich favorite, it used to refer to an uncouth and unrefined person. Pumpa was a word for fart, and Nichols short for Nicholas, so farting Nick. The bread, which was once considered fairly unrefined itself, got slapped with this term because only a boorish fellow would like it. The shift only became full amelioration when those brown loaves gained in popularity. Okay, but the opposite also happens. Sometimes a perfectly nice or neutral word takes on a more negative meaning. So let's say your friend Tim invents a time-traveling teapot. If you want to tell him how silly that is, make sure you haven't already traveled back to the Middle Ages first, because back then silly meant blessed or prosperous, and you wouldn't want Tim to get the wrong idea. 
When a word's meaning gets more negative over time, that's called pejoration. We get another toxic example from French, where the word poison used to mean potion. It used to be something good for you, and then it referred to any deadly beverage, and then to an ingredient that you slip into something to make it a little more lethal. And we got our word poison from there. Okay, so but what if your meaning isn't becoming more or less good, or more or less general, what if it's just changing? Well, another pretty common pattern is when a word with a really intense meaning becomes less extreme over time because of weakening. Now this happens all the time. Just think about all the words that you have to say how good something is. You can tell people that your favorite flavor of jam is awesome, amazing, fantastic, incredible, fabulous, stupendous, spectacular. Hyperbole like that is really common across languages. But one thing it does is cause the weakening of the meaning of the original words. After all, does jam really fill you with a sense of awe? Or does it seem like something that's out of a fantasy or a fable? Probably not, unless you really, really like jam. And one of our favorite words, literally, has undergone weakening from meaning, well, literally, to something more like figuratively. Language, it's awesome. So does weakening get its opposite too? I mean, we have broadening and narrowing, and we have amelioration and petturation, so is strengthening a thing? Well, not really. You've probably used hyperbole a lot to exaggerate how much you like something. But do you ever really do the opposite? How often do you talk about a band that you love by saying they're tolerable or okay? Semantic change doesn't just occur by itself. People fuel it by the ways that they have of talking, so strengthening doesn't really exist. Finally, you sometimes end up with words just losing one meaning and taking on another, which tends to be related. This is usually just called shift. So immoral used to just mean that something wasn't customary, or that it didn't correspond to that community's regular way of doing things, so outside of its mores. The word took on its sense of unethical only through our unfortunate tendency to equate different with bad. Language doesn't have any rules about how many times a word can change meanings either. Semantic shifts can happen over and over again to the same word. Like, take hearse. So a hearse now is the kind of car that coffins get carted around in, like to funerals. But originally, a hearse was a kind of farming tool with a triangular shape. Later, it became a candle holder used in churches with the same triangular shape. Then the word was used for a candle holder placed over coffins specifically, and then just the coffin itself. Finally, it came to mean the vehicle used in coffin transport. So language changes all the time, as people keep using it generation after generation. And it's not just the grammar that evolves, it's the regular meat of the language, the words, the shift too. So we've reached the end of the link space for this week. If you followed the shifts in my meaning, you learned that words can change their senses over time. That this happens because of how people use language. And that meanings can get narrower or broader, better or worse, weaker or just plain different. The Ling Space is produced by me, Moti Lieberman. It's directed by Delise Prévost, and it's written by both of us. Our production assistants are Georges Coulomb and Stéphane Hurtebiz. Our music and sound design is by Shane Turner, and our graphics team is Atelier Muse. We're down in the comments below, or you can bring the discussion back over to our website where we'll have some extra materials on this topic. Check us out on Tumblr, Twitter, and Facebook, and if you want to keep expanding your own personal link space, please subscribe. And we'll see you next Wednesday. Tuonani Athena!